Prayer of elimination. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silent in us any voice but your own. That hearing, we may also be obey your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Scripture readings taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened a home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparation that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister had left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Verse 41. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are in needed, or indeed, only one. Mary had chosen what is, what is better, and will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, may the, word, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. Amen. First of all, let me apologize that in the midst of my excitement over the orang asli baju and trousers, I forgot to welcome our guests and visitors. Sudah tua. A thousand apologies. And I thought I'd want to welcome, no need to welcome lah, sudah lupa, lupa over. But I'm even more stressed now because one of the guests, or rather a couple that is sitting in our midst, our guests, is actually my STM lecturer in the person of, I think, uh, Dr. Tan Kang Sang and his wife. Would you please stand up from where you all are? Yeah. Dr. Tan Kang Sang was formerly attached to OM and then he was in England doing uh, missions work. Now I think he's in, oh, I forgot. I think he's in, yeah, he's one of the, in, um, one of the mission agencies. If I'm not mistaken, he's here over the weekend to celebrate his mother's 80th birthday in a Peranakan restaurant. So I'm very happy. They had a good, they would have had a good dinner over the weekend, yeah? Welcome, Dr. Tan. And he, actually, he, together with his wife, I think I did a paper on urban missions or something to do with uh, mission, uh, missionology. So I'm even more stressed when he's there sitting down listening to what I have to say. Yeah? A joke, uh, not a joke. Normally when I speak in Taman ASEAN, there will be one particular person who will always appear when I preach, and that is uh, Ho Gek Kim, also one of SDM lecturers. And I said, God, you really know how to make me stress, yeah? All right. <laughs> okay, it's a very familiar passage that we are looking at this morning. And if you look at the context of uh, the story of Mary and Martha, actually the two passages before that, we see Jesus sending out the 72 messengers or the uh, disciples where they went out to the villages to do ministry work. And when they came back, they were all so excited and filled with joy because even demons submitted to them in the name of Jesus. And after that, it was followed by the parable of the Good Samaritan. The passage that we are looking at is a very familiar passage. It's the account of Jesus' visit to the home of Martha and Mary. And basically, in a nutshell, it reminds us about the importance of learning from Jesus and being in a deep or a personal relationship with Him. And this relationship that we are talking about takes priority even over our work, our service, and over other things, our busyness, the things that we usually do, the things that we are normally occupied with. So when Martha complained to Jesus that her sister is not helping her, that Mary is neglecting her household work and leaving all the work for Martha to do, Jesus gently corrected her. Jesus gently spoke to Martha. While Martha is occupied with things, Mary is occupied with Jesus. And Mary had chosen the better, which will not be taken away from her. The better is, of course, the privilege of learning at the feet of Jesus Christ himself. To be, to learn how to be a faithful disciple. And the setting of this home is in uh, Bethany, about a few miles east of Jerusalem, as recorded in Luke 19, verse 29. And of course, Jesus came to the home of Martha, 
on the imitation of Martha herself. And we also know that um, Mary, Martha and Lazarus have been good friends with Jesus. If you look at the book of John, you'll see that how close uh, they are. And here we have Mary inviting Jesus to the home. And for Martha, like many of us, I think when we have guests in our homes, we are all very excited and we, we, we want to do our best so that we'll be able to provide a good meal for our guests or visitor. And in the Jewish society, uh, hospitality has a very uh, high place. In fact, they, they place very high importance when they have visitors at home. And a woman's honour and reputation actually, some, uh, some rather, depended on her ability, ability to manage the household well. And uh, since service was a woman's highest calling, we can understand why Martha was also worked up in wanting to uh, prepare for Jesus. We know that Martha wanted to do her best. We know, we can see, and I sincerely believe that Martha has the gift of hospitality. But who she is? Probably a widow who has a large house and also has the means to invite Jesus and the other people or the whole entourage. Why did I say the whole entourage? By now, Jesus would have done um, a few years of ministry already, already like halfway, because Jesus has already sent out the 72 messengers and it's not the, the beginning point of the ministry of Jesus. Meaning to say that wherever Jesus went, if you look at the uh, Gospels, people will follow. You know, When Jesus goes out to, to teach, wherever he goes, there will be uh, a group of people, so-called his disciples or his followers or his students. And looking at the crowd that Jesus had, I can understand why Mary uh, is so uh, worked up about the preparation. You know, maybe we put in our context, uh, maybe she has to do a lot of preparation. Okay, we go to the menu later on, yeah? So what I'm trying to say is that probably Mary's complaint is or can be legitimate. But yet, but yet, for Jesus, it was, it was somehow a mere dis. Traction. You know, for, it came from the word root uh, diaconia. Compared to Mary's desire to sit at the feet of Jesus as a disciple and to learn from Jesus himself. Friends, serving is good and essential, but may not be the central thing. I repeat, serving is good and essential, important, necessary, but may not be the important thing, the, the central thing. You see, when we serve or when we invite people to our house, chances are that we will be busy. Yeah, even though if we cater, we will still have to prepare our house, yeah, mop the floor, uh, prepare the chairs or whatever. And looking at the context, like I said, probably uh, the crowd that came to Martha's house was slightly large. Yeah? And I'm not saying uh, this, that uh, serving is good uh, and you don't no need to serve. I'm not saying that because I know sometimes when pastor preaches here, the next thing is, ah, pastor, you say like that, like that, nah, so I don't have to serve anymore. No, no, I'm not saying like that. Just imagine Lucy coming to tell me, ah, okay, lah, pastor, you say no need to go, be busy. Ah. Next week, all of us will have, will have to drink only kopi o and biscuit, no more kuih. Yeah? Then all of us will be in trouble. The point here is that Serving is good and essential, but it should not be the main thing. Why? Because when we spend so much time on doing things uh, in preparation in our own local lingo, sometimes we, we get very kelang kabut. Yeah? We get very busy and then a lot of things we plan goes haywire. Yes, we can be busy, but we need to be careful. Yeah? Because busyness does not mean you are a faithful or fruitful Christian. It only means that you are busy, just like everyone else. And you look outside, everybody else is so busy. So does it mean that by being busy, you are a fruitful Christian, that you are a faithful Christian? Not necessarily so. 
This quotation is taken uh, from the book uh, Crazy Busy by Pastor Kevin, uh, Kevin D. Young. So we need, church, we need to be careful in the midst of our busyness, in the midst like, as we look at Martha's case. Sometimes we need to be careful. Otherwise, we may lose certain things in the midst of our serving. Three things which we may lose while serving. First one being, lose our joy in doing. Lose our joy in doing. Like I've said, Martha had, has the gift of hospitality. And I sincerely believe from her heart, she really wanted to give her best to prepare food, to prepare the home uh, for Jesus and the rest of the entourage. Yeah? And she wanted to make them feel as comfortable as possible. She wanted them to have the best food as possible. In our context, maybe if somebody is coming to our house, you know, we need to cook curry ayam. So we need to go, and go to the market to choose the best ayam. Whether ayam jantan or ayam betina, I'm not so sure. Lah, huh? <laughs> so we need to choose the best ayam. Tak more ayam injection, maybe ayam kampung. But for me, I don't quite like ayam kampung because ayam kampung is very muscular, so very keras. So we spend so much time choosing the correct type of ayam. And then curry powder. What type of curry powder? A1. My babas, adabi, or should I do my own curry powder? Should I go and prepare my own curry powder? If I need to cook asam pedas for my, my guests, lengkuas, have to find nice lengkuas ma. Lengkuas too young cannot, tak wangi. Too old, too keras, very hard to pound. Then I'll be in trouble. Yeah? Roti canai, if I want to belanja my guests roti canai, I have to prepare the, 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 the dough one night before. Yeah? All these things, all these preparations, lemak nanas, I have to get fresh prawns. I have to ask Karen where to get fresh prawns, where it's still jumping. Yeah? Otherwise, my guests will not uh, have the best um, masak lemak nanas. If that happens, if I'm so focused with the details, at the end of the day, I think I'll be so tired by the time my guests come, by the time my guests eat, and I'll be so uh, distracted and so tired, I think... Chances are, I will lose the joy of doing all these things. Correct or not? Ladies. Hey, ladies don't cook one. Ah. How come? Wow, all, tuma tau kene, wah, rumah all got, got maids. Ah. Ladies, correct or not? Ladies. Ah, like that lah. Ladies will know lah. Eh. They got to go to market, look for the barang-barang. Yeah, it's not an easy. Easy task because we have to do a lot of preparations. Personally, I myself, you know, when I have to do a lot of things to, to cook or whatever, or hosting guests, after cooking, I will feel so tired. Sometimes I cannot eat. You know, visitors who come say, Daddy, sudah makan belum? Eh, makan sikit lah. I will be so tired, sometimes feeling so lousy at times. Worse still, everything that I cook, I feel is not nice. So tasteless. Taste and taste, not enough salt. Taste and taste, not enough uh, tak cukup wangi. Not nice. Why? Probably, I've lost my joy in him because so tired. Correct, not ladies. Of course, there are one or two men here who also cook. I know, but tak mau cakap ah malu nanti. Okay. The second thing that we might lose is that we will lose our focus. Yeah, lose our focus. Jesus is here at home together with uh, in in the home of Martha to teach and to share and uh, to. To, to let them know about God's word. But because Martha was so busy with the preparations, she has lost her focus. Friends, it is good for us to give our best. It is good for Martha to do her best for our Lord. But at the end of the day, in the midst of all her busyness and in the, in the midst of our busyness in wanting to prepare the best, sometimes we might lose our focus. Yeah? For example, like if I invite Carol and Major to my house for uh, Christmas. Oh, yeah, I forgot the word. Christmas open house. You know, I invite Dina, I invite Carol, I invite Auntie Alice. You know, they have, you know, oh, Danny, Pastor Danny invite me go, go and makan. Auntie Sally also I invited. You know, so Christmas, yeah, must use lipstick, must pakai cantik cantik, go and set the hair. And then here I am so busy. Auntie, I'm makan, I'm makan. I kerang kabut in and out that I forgot that I have. Auntie Sally with me, I have Auntie Carol who has actually uh, bought a new baju and a nice 
What's the most expensive handbag? Huh? Like Rosemars one. Huh? He has come to my house with a nice handbag, you know, Auntie Carol. Uh, Auntie Sally has got a big diamond solitaire or anywhere, you know. Auntie Alice also put makeup, put bedak, cantik-cantik. Dina pakai mini skirt. Then I didn't notice. Surely they, they will be, you know, I neglected my guests. I'm only interested in what? Wow, make sure. Catherine, where's the, where's the sambal chili? Oh, where's, where's the, 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 the nanas? Uh, where's this? Where's that? I forgot about my guests and visitors. After that, Karen was so angry with me. He said, next year when you invite me, I won't go to your house some more. Uh, you neglected me. Sorry, Karen. I'm so busy. I've lost my focus. We tend to forget about the guests that are in our house. In this case, Martha forgot that Jesus was there in her midst, in their midst. We lose our focus. Friends, Jesus is residing in our hearts, in our lives. When we are too busy, we also forget that Jesus is here in our midst. Jesus is in our lives. He's our counsellor. He's just right beside us. So the thing that can help us to be in line is that we can ask ourselves lah, okay when we do all these things what is it for what is our main uh, what is the thing that defines our doing of all these things is just to entertain our guests or is just because of to feel good that i do all these things the third thing that happens to many of us and to most of us including myself when i'm busy or when I get irritated, I lose my cool. How many of us can, we, can I identify with this uh, third thing which we might lose? When we are tired, when we are busy about anything, our mind is so clunk about, we are so absorbed with our things to do in our midst of business. What ha- happened to matter can also happen to us. And we are all human beings. When we are tired, uh, when we are uh, busy, we lose our cool. We grumble, and at the end of the day, we get angry. Because when we are busy and we are too focused on ourselves, we become quite self-centered. Why is nobody helping me? Yeah? Oh, Karen complained that I, 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 I never look at her, her, her nice baju. But she also can come into the kitchen and help me ma, wash the cups. Ma. Why, why is Auntie Karen just sitting down like that? Huh? Why is she not helping me to dish out the dishes? Right? Sometimes we grumble and we complain. Because what happens? I... I, I, I'm so tired. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Why is the other person not helping me? That's what happened to Martha. She went out and spoke to Jesus. Just imagine, I mean, if you all are so angry when I'm preaching here or when Pastor Andrew is preaching here, Lucy just comes in front. Hey, Danny, you tak tahu ke? Gua sekarang gua tengah potong kue, cik sibuk lagi. You ask Molly to come help me lah. Lucy, she's sitting down listening to your sermon. Ask her to come and boil coffee now. That means Lucy Ong must be so angry that she lost her cool. She came up here to marah me or to tell me off. Ask Molly to help her in the kitchen now. Can you see the this thing? Yeah? I think that's what happened to Martha and Mary. She saw Garam, she went up to Jesus and told Jesus to ask her sister to help her. What more did she say? Don't you care? You tak peduli ka? Gua cik penat lagi satu orang. Ask her to help. She sitting down at your feet like tau kenio. I kerja macam mau mati like that. Ask her to come help me now. We lose our cool. Yeah? Friends, what are the things that occupy us so much? What are the things that we are so busy about? Our home, our family, children, our spouses, our in-laws, our outlaws, cleaning of our homes, cooking, gardening, it could be anything. Our business, our career, office matter, working up late, no time for other things. Church matters, committee meetings, wow, this one is very dangerous. If Komping knows I say this, then you say, yeah, I, time for me to step down. I'm just saying that what are the things that occupy us most of the time? It could be also church matters. Yeah? So, the point is that we should not be so occupied with all these things until we lose our cool, until we get angry easily. That brings me to my next point. There is a proper time to listen to Jesus and a proper time to work for Him. 
a proper time to sit at his feet and a proper time also to be learning from him, just like Mary. See, I suppose these two sisters, they are of different character. Yeah, Martha, being, probably being the, the older one and being the matron of the house, she is quite used to commanding and she's quite used to organizing things. And when things don't go her way, she, she gets very upset and she gets angry very easily. And Mary probably is the more of the cool type, the relaxed type, you know. And in our terms today, maybe she's more like the, the siu chie or the talking type, which is not wrong, you know. It's just her nature. And the best of it is that she likes to be in the presence of Jesus. She was a faithful follower and she likes to sit at the feet of a respected rabbi. In this instance, Jesus himself. And actually this position, to be sitting at the feet of a respected rabbi, actually if you look in the Jewish culture, is something very special. It's a position of a disciple. In fact, Paul himself also says that he also grew up, he was under a rabbi in Acts 22, uh, 3. I'm a Jew born of, in, in Tarsus of Cilicia, but brought up in this city, I studied under Gamaliel. He was also sitting at the feet of another rabbi, another scholar, another religious man. And in Luke 8, 35 also, the man that has been uh, cleansed from demons, he also sat at the feet of Jesus, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in right mind, and they were afraid. And there were other writings as well in uh, Mishnah, which records of this unique sitting position, to be sitting at the feet of Rabbi, that says that, yes, you have been included as one of my disciples. Jesus acknowledged that, yes, Mary is his disciple. You see, friends, Jesus shatters cultural expectations by affirming the status of a woman as his disciple. And to be sitting at this position is actually uh, uh, is quite shocking because women during the time of Jesus has got no place at all in society. In fact, they are not even given the opportunity for a formal education like the men uh, do. Yeah? So their duties are what? Household work, lah. sewing, cooking, weaving, and probably cleaning. But Mary had an interest to learn to worship, to be a true disciple of Jesus, and she knows what to do. And that is why Jesus, knowing her heart, allowed her, or was rather very pleased with Mary. And that was how Jesus responded. Friends, church, we can also be like Mary. I'm not saying that you just sit down and lay around and fall asleep while pastor is preaching, eh? to, but to be listening attentively, to be in the presence of God. Yeah? And why was um, Mary able to do that. I think Jesus could see the heart of Mary. She understood Mary's heart. I mean, Jesus understood Mary's heart. Number one, Mary had the desire to be a disciple and a worshiper. Yeah, and in all, and she begins by sitting in silence at the feet of Jesus, listening and learning, even though it was against the social culture during that time. And a good way to be a, a true worshipper begins with silence, begins with listening, to be in the presence of God, to enjoy God's presence. Yeah? We need to learn sometimes in the midst of all our business, in order to be a disciple and be a worshipper, follow what Mary did, to be in the presence of God because God loves us and He is just waiting for you to come into His presence. Psalms 27.4 gives us that glimpse. Yeah? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I ask, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple, to just be sitting down and just enjoying God's presence, one-to-one yeah? -one as a community. We need to take time as a disciple and worshipper to be in the presence of our Lord. Friends, there is a proper time to sit, to listen to Jesus, and a proper time to be busy with our work. 
Second thing that we can see in Mary was that she had a hunger for Jesus more than food and details. I'm not saying that uh, eating, but the details about the food preparation and all the other things. Yeah? Mary had a hunger for Jesus. She desired to learn more. She wanted to listen more from Jesus. And all this physical preparation, the food preparation, whether it's wakaloa or whether it's roti chanai, whether it's kopi o, chap ik chong or sing sing, it does not matter. These are all less important things to Mary. Mary had in mind that, yeah, I need to listen to my teacher first. And all these things later on also never mind. You see, when Mary was focused on what she wanted, she got the best of it. Martha, on the other hand, was too busy, was too kelangkabut, probably she lost the one thing that Jesus wanted to give to her. And all of us, we need to choose sometimes, either to be like Mary or to be like Martha. Friends, spiritual food is also important in as much as we pay attention to details. And for Mary, even as she has uh, chosen to be at the feet of Jesus, what for us, what is it that is hindering us from choosing? Some of us can be very busy with a lot of things outside. Yeah? Some of us are football fans, uh, golf khaki. Some of us uh, like to keep uh, different types of car. Some of us like to do housework, whatever it may be. Can we be like Mary to set aside all these things and to focus on the Lord wholeheartedly? Yeah? And I think as we look at the storyline that has been uh, provided for, I think we can learn three things from Mary. Yeah? We can cult cultivate the habit of the three S. The first S is showing up at the feet of Jesus. Yeah? That means Mary took the uh, uh, initiative, made the effort to be in the presence of Jesus, to show up at the feet of Jesus. She knew what to do. So for us, we need to learn how to make time to sit in the feet of Jesus, to be in the presence of God. And of course, in Mary's case, it was sitting literally in front in the midst of Jesus. For us, it could be in another way. Yeah? It could be our time with the Lord in the mornings, in the evenings, to show up, to be in the presence of Jesus, to be in the presence with God. It could be our devotion time. It could be our disciple group. It could be our journaling time. It could be our prayer time whereby we communicate with our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, church, we need to learn the discipline or we need to learn to cultivate the discipline of showing up at the feet of Jesus. And the other thing that we can be mindful of is that when we learn how to sit at the feet of Jesus is that we, when we sit at the feet of uh, someone else, we are actually humbling ourselves, be able to lower down ourselves and to listen and to learn. So as we show up at the feet of Jesus, we are actually humbling ourselves before the Lord. And many good things, many blessings may come when we have the correct attitude to show up at the feet of Jesus, to be in a, a, a posture of humili humility. So friends, learn to cultivate the habit of showing up at the feet of Jesus. I'm almost ending. When I end, I will belanja you all makan. Because today we talk about makan, right? So, but not yet. Tunggu, huh? another five minutes or ten minutes. I'm going to give you all, I'm going to belanja you all a very nice Chinese dish. But not yet. You have to wait first. I got two more points. Because we are talking about cooking, right? So you all loud already. Then you all, all looking at the time. Wow, lunch time going. You also thinking of Pranakan food because our Dr. Tang Kang San had a nice Pranakan dinner. Never mind. Today I will, I will belanja you a nice Chinese dish. Only one dish. One dish. Only. Okay. The second point is that 
stillness in the midst of our busyness. Yeah. It is always good to be still in the presence of God. In fact, Jesus himself withdrew to quiet places on many occasions in the Gospels. Yeah. When he needed rest, he withdrew. When he needed to speak to the Father, he withdrew. When he needed to pray for the disciples, he, ju- he did just that. Friends, when we are busy, our minds, our hearts has got no peace. That inner self, the inner being of us is so restless that we feel that our minds is just so crowded and clouded. We cannot hear and we cannot function properly. When we are busy, even though we try to, you know, to, to do our quiet time, at times our mind will just be thinking of what we have to do next. Yeah, after reading this Bible, I need to go to the market. After doing this, I need to send my, my, my daughter for tuition. I need to do this, I need to do that. Our minds are so clouded with all the duties that we have to do, we are not able to be in a position of stillness in the midst of our busyness. Yeah? And chances are, when we are like that, we will be stressed. So friends, one thing that we can learn from Mary's morning is that to be in a stillness in the midst of our busyness, take time to spend really, really meaningful, quiet moments with our Lord. And that will be helpful. Even though, I would say, even though our work is not, are, are not completed yet. For example, if you have to sweep the floor, if you have to mop the floor, we can always do it later. Ma. Yeah? But of course, we need to plan nicely. And Psalms 40 also gives us another reminder that we need to take time to be still in the presence of our Lord. And one of the I also actually, I I, I like times of quietness. And one of the very nice uh, pictures that I always use to to, to cool down myself or to to feel relaxed is I like um, jungle, I like mountains, and I like lakes. And that is why you all know why I always go to Nepal, right? Ah, okay. Here we are. You know, when you're in a position of stillness, it's so Serene is so nice. Don't you all agree with me? Huh? Yeah, I mean, it just helps to, you know, when God speaks to, to us in, in this kind of uh, setting, uh, it's easier for us to be attentive to what God has to share, what God has to tell us. So, remember, uh, those of you who are very busy, you want some time of quietness, follow me, go Nepal. Then you can see all these things all along the way. Just a joke, okay? Um, yes, friends, we need to find pockets of time whereby we can be uh, in a position of stillness, whereby we can concentrate on Jesus, and whereby we are not busy, and then we will not be distracted at all. Look at the uh, water in the lake. It's so peaceful. Huh? It, there's no ripple at all. So how nice if our lives, we can find you no know, chance of time where we can just be in the presence of God and we feel so peaceful and serene. And sometimes we have to be careful, not blaming everything to the evil one. Sometimes the evil one can keep us busy yeah, in doing things. Evil one can keep us busy fighting with people. You know, when Moses was praying out on the mountain and Joshua and the rest of them were fighting with all, all, all the enemies. Sometimes it can be like that. Yeah? We need to spend time like Moses did, just praying, lifting up his uh, tongkat to pray for the Israelites. But the evil one will distract us and will make us busy. And the th- third uh, discipline that we can cultivate or learn how to cultivate is that we need to uh, learn to uh, uh, the selecting the one thing that is required. Many things are needed, but only one thing is required. See, when Mary chose to sit and learn at the feet of Jesus. Jesus himself said, she made the better choice. She made the correct choice. In fact, it was the best choice. And Jesus said further, and what she had received will not be taken away from her. Yeah, we can think, you know, what we need to do. I must do this. We can hear. But ultimately, Mary chose Mary selected. Can I have the next slide, please? Next. Next. 
How many of you all know what? This is I say, I belanja all this food. Sorry, I hear. Oh, okay. My Cantonese is not very good. Huh? I heard Karen saying, Pun Choi. If I pronounce wrongly, don't get angry. Huh? So I think this, I'm not so sure how much it costs, but apparently, it can come to how much, Karen? 300? 800? Okay. Oh, 6 to 800. So I'm not very sure. I asked Nancy Teo what they have in this dish. You know, they. I think it's roasted duck. That one? Scallops, big prawns, uh, a certain type of abalone, is it? And then, whatever lah. Basically, the whole dish comprised of very good quality food. That's why I belanja you very good food, you see? I give you all the best. Then don't kind complain ah. Tiap pasal never belanja you makan. Right. Actually, the, everything, all the components here, a good stuff item. That is why it costs about six to eight hundred dollars. Don't know where to order. Ask Karen. Karen can teach you where to order. Okay? Huh? Oh, maybe more. Okay. All right. But okay. Next the next slide, please. Ultimately, there are so many items, right? You will need to take your own chopstick and choose the one that you like best or you like most. Correct or not? People like me. Even you put the best mushroom, I will avoid taking mushroom because when I take mushroom, I will get indigestion, cannot digest. So then I will, you know, it's not, I'm not comfortable. If I were to take the prawns, my cholesterol is also slightly high. I cannot take. So probably if there's cauliflower or the parsley leaf, I will just take the parsley leaf because I'm a vegetarian, right? Whatever it is, we have all the things to do or whatever. Ultimately, Mary chose the one thing that was required. We may have a lot of things to do, we may have a lot of things to choose from, but all of us will have to do the selection ourselves. And when we choose, for example, if I choose the abalone to eat, it is in my stomach, no one else can take it away from me. When I choose to sit at the feet of Jesus to listen, to learn, Whatever that I've learned, it shall be mine and mine alone. When my relationship with God is right, when I can hear God speaking to me clearly in the midst of stillness, that relationship is mine to keep. And that will help me in my walk with the Lord. These things, the thing that you finally choose, as Mary did, will not be taken away from you. Friends, even as we come to a close, as we prepare ourselves to sing the closing song, let us be reminded once again, yeah? Serving is good and essential, but it may not be the most important or the central thing. And be careful that we do not lose our joy in doing, do not lose our focus, and do not lose our cool, yeah? And a good way to start doing is that to... To, to cultivate the habit of the three S, showing up at the feet of Jesus, to be in a position of stillness in the midst of our busyness, and finally, selecting the one thing that is required. Are you going to choose all your business to do, or are you going to choose something that cannot be stolen away from you? That is to sit at the feet of Jesus. And so, there are a few reflection questions, especially number three. Huh? Pastor Andrew and Pastor Danny will never finish talking about this. Yeah? Uh, have we set aside time for DG, Bible study classes, personal devotion, personal prayer, and all the other things that are necessary to develop a healthy relationship with our God? Yeah? As we come to a close, as we sing this closing song, let it be our desire yeah, to do our best uh, to do to cultivate this relationship with the Lord.